National Broadcasting Company presents Radio City Playhouse, Attraction 9. Radio City Playhouse proudly presents Betrayal, another story by Ernest Canoy, author of Ground Floor Window and Whistle Daughter Whistle. Irv is played by Bernard Grant, and the production is directed by Harry W. Junkin. Here is Radio City Playhouse, Attraction 9, Betrayal. Streets look a lot different at four in the morning than they do in the daylight. I mean, it's quiet. You can see the old papers and the orange peel in the gutter. I checked it off my beat about four. I got rid of the blue straight jacket at the precinct. was heading for that nice, lumpy bed in my room. When I turned off 117th Street, I spotted this kid sitting on a curb leaning against a street lamp. I guess I look funny in civvies or else he didn't hear me come up because he jumped about three feet. What do you want? Nothing. What are you doing here? Minding my own business. Oh, are you? fresh kid, ain't you? Where do you live? I forget. Ain't it kind of laid out for you? I got it all night. Well, I haven't. Now, quit horsing around. Where do you live? Why don't you chase yourself around a block and haul a fire? Get up out of there. Blow, bud. I said get up. Hey, let go of my arm, you big crumb. Why don't you pick on somebody your own size? Come on now, kid. You better get home. What's it to you? Look, you don't want to get into trouble. Go ahead. Call a cop. All I can do is take me downtown and shove me in the children's shelter. That don't bother me none. Know the whole story, don't you? Huh? Never mind. Well, how long do you expect to sit in the gutter? Look, mister, why don't you leave me alone? I didn't do you nothing. Well, you just can't sit there. Come on. Hey, let go. Where are you taking me? Look, if I'm going to argue with a pint-sized Humphrey Bogart, I'm going to do it over some breakfast. I'm hungry. <laughs> Another all black. Uh, no sugar, Charlie. Throw one black. Well, kid, how about it? How about what? You. Where do you live? What's your name? Shiv. Shiv, huh? You carry one? Yeah. You can look. It snaps open. Hey, that's quite a frog sticker. It's legal. The blade's an eighth under four inches. I measured. That's why they call me Shiv, see? Because of the knife. I got my name on the handle on the other side. And how about the rest of it? Shiv what? I forget that, too. One black herb. Hey, Charlie, you ever see this kid before? Me? No. You done something? He's got lockjaw. Lockjaw? What do you know? Look, kid. Shiv. I ought to turn you in so they take care of you down at the children's shelter. I wouldn't tell them nothing either. All right. Look, I'm crazy, but I'll make a bargain with you. If I put you up tonight, will you go home tomorrow? Well... It's dad at the children's shelter. You'll be there for a couple of days at least. You wouldn't pull nothing, would you, mister? Oh, I'll give you Charlie here as a reference. Well, okay, it's a deal. Thanks. Come on. Uh, wait, mister. What now? How about a piece of that pie before we go? <laughs> okay. Hey, Charlie, two apple pies a la mode. <laughs> Okay, inside. Gee, this ain't bad. You live alone? Solitary confinement. Yeah. Hey. What's the matter? You got a real icebox in the corner. It's empty, so relax. Here, you take the couch. Okay, by me. Boy. Hey, get off of there with your feet. What's the matter? My shoes wouldn't hurt nothing. That couch may have pansies on it, kid, but it don't need no fertilizer. Come on, off with the shoes. Oh, I... Okay, now the other one. Hey, when's the last time you washed your feet? We went swimming last week down at 100th Street. Only a week ago, huh? Well, we unscrewed a hydrant last night. Should have seen it. Looked like Niagara Falls or something. I didn't take my shoes off. Yeah, I'll bet. They look like they grew there. Boy, guess I am tired. How about breaking down, Shiv? What were you doing on Dawn Patrol down there? 
It's my old man. If I don't get home by ten, he slams me with his belt. Figure it's better to stay away. It wouldn't occur to you to get in before ten, huh? That early? The gang's just starting. Some of the guys don't go home all night. And what keeps them that busy? Ah, you know. All sorts of stuff. Depends. Last night we were supposed to have a war. The Panthers, that's us, against a gang from the Bronx. We would have licked them hard. You got beat. Nah. Some lame brain cop showed up blowing his brains out on a whistle. By the time we quit running, we couldn't find him again. Spoil the fun, huh? Sure. We had it all fixed. Uh -huh. Guys up on the roof with light bulbs, air guns, everything. We would have murdered him. And suppose somebody gets hurt? So they get hurt. Shorty had four stitches last week. He's a leader. The uh, Bronx gang get him? Yeah. Shorty was walking along, see, when he sees his kid from the Bronx all alone. It's a little kid, so Shorty jumps him. So, naturally. Only them Bronx rats are hiding around the corner, and boom, they're all over Shorty. That's the kind of dirty fighters they are. Filthy. They would have carved Shorty up good, only a cop came along and chased him. That was the first time he was ever glad to see a flatfoot. You, uh, don't like flat feet. You kidding? i never seen a cop yet who wasn't yellow clear down to the sidewalk. Uh-huh. All the time breaking up stick ball. They never let anybody have any fun. Bunch of cross-eyed crumbs. I wouldn't trust a cop as far as I could throw a hippopotamus. Anyhow, what are you doing sticking up for him? Why shouldn't I? You think a guy like you would want to steer clean at the cops. What? You don't have to worry about me. I won't say nothing. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? I seen it when we come in the room. Seen what? Well, I figure nobody wants to get chummy with the cops when he packs a rod in his coat pocket. A rod? You... <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> you thought I was, uh... Come here, Shiv. What is it? Take a good look in the closet. Holy smokes. One suit, blue serge, complete with brass buttons and badge. A cop? Commonly known as New York's finest. Shorty finds out I stayed with a cop, he'll take me apart. I won't tell him if you don't. They'll kill me, that's what. It'll be murder. Well, the kid finally scared himself to sleep. I guess he kind of felt like the lamb that lay down with the lion. <laughs> Oh, I get plenty tired for taking the taxpayers for eight hours, so it didn't take me long to fall asleep. I was dreaming of sidewalks made out of foam rubber when a shaft of light from the window hit my eye. I woke up just in time. Where you going, kid? Just out. All right, kid, put it back. Huh? The watch, put it back. What do you mean? What watch? Mine, it's in your pocket. Do you put it back or take your pants apart? I wasn't going nowhere with it. Just stepping out in the hall to see what time it is. Oh, y yeah, the, the light's better out there. Oh, kid, you've got enough brass to coat a four-post of bed. Hand it over. Oh, I was going to bring it back. Here, it's a cheap watch anyway. Oh, I'm sorry, next time I'll have it gold-plated. What'd you want to do that for anyway? I ought to take you in. I just wanted to show it to Shorty and the rest of the guys. None of the Panthers ever swiped a cop's watch before. There, yeah, they're slipping. I'd have brought it back, like I said. Just wanted to show it around. Gee, I wouldn't swipe nothing from you. You've been okay for a cop. Shiv left the watch and beat it out the door like someone was chasing him. I looked in the closet to see if he lifted the badge off my spare blouse for a souvenir. Everything seemed to be there, so I went back to bed. That night before I went out on the beat, I stopped by the desk man, Sergeant Gold. He's kind of a stubby guy with gray hair. He looks like he might have pulled in Henry Hudson's sailors for disturbing the peace. Another day, another dollar. What do you mean, day? All right, night. What's the matter? You got trouble? Sure, all the time. If ain't a crap game up an alley, it's pulling a drunk out of a doorway before he freezes stiff. Eh, you can have the eight to four. I did, when it was four hours longer. Yeah, I know. You was in the force and they wore stand-up collars. 23rd precinct? What's eating you? Ah, nothing. Maybe that kid I picked up last night. Kid? You didn't bring in no kid. I put him on my couch for the night. Uh, he'd make a clam of conversational. What's his name? I don't know. He calls himself Shiv because he carries one big enough to slice steak off an elephant. Wait a minute. Is he a small kid that looks like an underdone weasel with long hair in his eyes? I would have been an alley cat. 
Yeah. Well, his old man gets hauled in here about once a month on a drunken disorderly. Oh. Name's uh, Walter or Walters or something. I could look it up. The kid comes down to pay his fine. Yeah, that figures. Well, so long. I gotta go out and protect the taxpayers. I checked out and started wearing my arches down on the country. Not much doing. Pull an old lady out from under a cab and shift her off to Lincoln Hospital. Uh, broke up a fight in Broadway. And about 11 o'clock, I turned down 120th Street. There was a bunch of kids sitting on a stoop. And I spotted Shiv on the top step and started over. I just wanted to find out if he got home all right, but somebody let out a yell. Hey, it's a cop. As far as I could see, they melted into the ground. About a half an hour later, I was passing that little alley next to the First National Bank. Hey. What the devil? It's me, Shiv. What do you want? I wanted to explain about before. Thought you might be sore or something. About what? About me calling Chicky on you and running. Oh, I figured it was you. What was that? The Panthers General Staff? Sort of. They sure looked guilty or something. What was up? Nothing. I was afraid you was coming over to talk to me. Ah. Well, what do I owe the pleasure of this to? I only wanted you shouldn't get sore. I don't have to get funny about it. All right, all right. I'm sorry. That's okay. Well, I gotta get going again. You wanna walk with me? Yeah. No, I, I can't. The Panthers? They wouldn't trust me none if they saw us. You understand that doesn't mean I don't want to. Okay, Shiv. See you around. Sure, Earth. Earth? <laughs> Where'd you pick that up? I seen it on the back of your watch. <laughs> It got to be kind of a habit. Shiv would wait in the alley and walk a couple of blocks with me. Only the kid was careful never to get seen under a streetlight. He was still afraid of being caught trading with the enemy or something. Once we was talking baseball or something, and Shiv must have forgot because we came around a corner onto Broadway. And across the street, the whole path of General Headquarters was spread over the stoop of 3427. They must have spotted us because the first thing I know, Shiv is holding onto my arm, hollering. Let go of me, cop. I didn't do nothing. Let go, you flat foot. Crumb, you brass monkey. I wasn't even touching him. But he broke away from me like as if I had a death grip on him. He waited for me outside the precinct station that night. Hey. Hey, you're... Aha. Uh -huh. Houdini, the escape artist. Oh, I didn't mean nothing. Did it go over big with the Panthers? It wasn't sore or nothing, was no, it? No, no. There's nothing I like better than being called a crumb. Unless it's a brass monkey. That ain't nothing. Practically a compliment. Take it easy, will you? I only said that because the Panthers seen me. Like yelling kill the umpire or something. Okay, we'll let the whole thing drop. You hungry? Yeah, sure. Well, come on. What's the matter you're out late again? The old man's on another bat. Figure I ain't gonna walk in on him and have him think I'm a snake. Is he working? On and off. We ain't had nothing to eat in the house for a couple of days. Yeah, how about you? I do okay. You know, snitching stuff off the grocery store. Hey, you better not let me catch you lifting anything. You wouldn't turn me in, would you? I'm serious, Shiv. If you need money, you come to me, see? Well, I don't do it no more. I've been going up to my aunt's tea. Only she cooks like a cement mixer. You stay at your aunt's, see? I don't like that sticky finger stuff. Take it easy, Irv. I didn't take nothing big. Besides, I don't have to take that from you. What? Well, I mean, we're just friends or something, see? When you start handing me big-time advice, it spoils everything, like you was a teacher or a relative. Okay, if you want it that way. And besides, just because I figure one cop ain't so bad, it don't mean the rest of them ain't no good low-down crumbs. Sounds like a communique from the Panthers. Sure, he made me a lieutenant. <laughs> a commissioned officer, huh? Congratulations. They only got two of them, me and Bernie. Okay, Lieutenant, here's Charlie's place. Unless you got scruples against eating with the enlisted men. <laughs> That's the way it was. The kid sort of tolerated me like I was his personal exception to the general rule about cops. After that, I couldn't get nothing off him. About what he did in the daytime, I mean. I guess he went to his aunt's for meals. I, I never asked him. Once, I tried to talk him out of the Panthers. Why don't you go dive in a sewer? You think I'm one of them milk-fed petunias that runs home to Mama after school? Look, I don't ask you to quit the cops, so you lay off the Panthers. 
So I did. After that, the kid was even more careful in case, perish forbid, anybody should see him with me. Once I offered to take him to the polo grounds when the Dodgers were in. You mean it? For the doubleheader? Sure, I'm a hot sport. I sneaked in last year to the stadium. There's a place around by the police. Not anymore. They fenced that one in. Ah, the dirty crumbs. Money man. They got a quaint idea you should pay to get in. Not me. It's against my principle. Yeah, I figured. Well, you want to go? Sure. Okay, I'll pick you up at the 8th Avenue subway, 116th Street. Ah. Well, what are you shaking your head for? Look, suppose I meet you up there on top of the bluff. Okay, okay. Far be it for me to damage your social standing. The top of Coogan's Bluff it is. I'll be wearing a white carnation in my buttonhole. Just whistle twice and give the password. Then for a while, I didn't see the kid. I got to looking for him in doorways, down alleys. I even checked the children's shelter downtown and the juvenile court. I didn't hear anything about him until one night when I came in off my hitch to sign out. It was pouring down, sheets of rain. I was sweating under the heavy raincoat and hood. I just got it off and started to stretch when Sergeant Gold called me over. Hey, are you? Come here a minute, will you? Sure, Sergeant. Hey, how do you get a desk job on a night like this? Never mind. Did you hear we had a warehouse cracked on 135th Street? Yeah? Karen spotted him and got himself shot in the leg. Hey, that's tough. How is he? Well, he's in Lincoln Hospital. He'll be all right. That ain't what I called you over for. They found this in the warehouse alley. A knife, huh? It's got writing on the handle, Irv. Yeah. Yeah, I see. You want me to bring him in? Figured you'd know where to find him. Anything else? You don't mind. I mean, I could send somebody else. That's all right, Sergeant. I'll bring the kid in. I stood outside the station, watching the rain driving against the green lights. I didn't know where to find a crazy little jerk. Wasn't anybody much on the streets. A couple of cabs come by. Once in a while, somebody under an umbrella. I went over to the house where the kid lived. The landlady was scared, trembling when she saw me outside, and she let me in the room with a pasky. The kid's old man was lying across a cot, colder than a dead fish with a whiskey smell strong enough to walk on. I... I poked it with my nightstick. Hey. And he just muttered. Come on, come on, Peter. Go hey, away. Hey, hey, come on. Come to. Go away. I'm sleeping. You're stiff. Come on. Sit up. Hey, what, what's the idea? I'll... Now, I'll... stay the up. Idea... Hey, what is this? You a cop? Yeah. What do you want? I ain't done nothing. Where's the kid? Huh? The kid. The kid. What kid? For crying out loud, your kid. Shiv. Oh, him? I, I don't know. Go away. Stay up there. Come on. Quit shaking me, will you? Where is he? I told you I don't know. What do you want him for? Oh, never mind. Ain't surprised. That kid's no good. No respect for his father, see? All the kids are no good. You don't know where he Whole is? Whole generation no good. Oh. See, in trouble, I'll beat the ears off him, a little no good devil. Yeah, I'll bet. I'll tear him apart. No respect for his father. You're sure you don't know where he is? I told you I don't know, and I don't care if he never shows up. The pain in the neck. Go on, let me alone. I'm going to sleep, see? Beat it. <laughs> I told the landlady to call the station if he showed up. It was beginning to show daylight when I got back on the street. I called into Sergeant Gold and went home. My feet hurt more than usual, and I, I guess I felt pretty rotten. I just about made it up to the stairs of my room and opened the door. Huh? How, how did you get in here? That lock wouldn't stop a campfire, girl. What'd you come here for? I... Just ain't seen you for a while, that's all. Yeah, yeah, I'll bet. How you been? Why don't you cut it out? What's the matter, Ken? A guy ask how you been? Shiv, I saw your knife tonight. That one with your name on the handle. You did? That's funny. I, I lost it a week ago. That's right. It dropped right out of my pocket they when I... They found that knife in a warehouse alley, Shiv. Right next to where a cop got shot. I... I lost it playing stickball. That's it. Oh, cut it out. I... It was the Panthers, wasn't it? They got pretty big. Decided to quit snitching bananas off of fruit stands. Graduated to a warehouse job, didn't they? Listen, Irv, I didn't want to go see, but I was a lieutenant. They would have said I was... 
I didn't want to go, see? Who had the gun? Who did the shoot? I... I don't know. Yeah, you don't know. Remember, Irv, you told me to come to you when I was in trouble, you remember? Yeah. That's why I come. Irv, I only got one friend anywhere. That's why I come to you. Wait a minute. I got to get out of town, Irv, before they find out. I got to have some money. I'll pay you back. Honest, I will. I'll get a job somewhere. Lots of places hire kids. Hold on, Shiv. You're going to let me to do, aren't you, Irv? Like you always said, if I needed anything... You shouldn't have come here, Shiv. I couldn't have gone home, Irv. The old man would have beat me up with an empty bottle and my Aunt Myra would have just prayed at me. I knew you'd help me, Irv. You got to. You shouldn't have come. You're going to give me the dough, ain't you? Ain't you, Irv? Irv! I'm going to take you in, Shiv. No. I got to. Besides, if I don't, somebody else will. You see that, don't you, kid? It's the only way, Shiv. Let go of my arm. I got to. I should have known. Listen to me, Shiv. Let go, I said, you low-down, stinking, good-for-nothing cop. I should have known you cheap, crummy, no-good double-crosser. Shiv! What kind of a friend? Come to him for help and right away he squeals. What are they going to make you for this, an inspector or something? Calm down, will you? Let me tell you, I won't make the same mistake again. There ain't no cop living who ain't rotten right down through. I'll bet they make you a commissioner or something. You shut up a while and listen. I... I said Listen! Maybe you think I like pulling you in for the juvenile court. You're supposed to be a friend. Sure, a friend. What do you think my job is? You think I get paid for nothing? I'm supposed to see that nobody gets hurt in my beat. I'm supposed to pull people out of fights and make sure nobody gets mugged in the alleys. I gotta see that nobody cleans out a store when nobody's looking. You're breaking my heart. You think it's easy being a cop? It's a job like anything else and ain't such a good paying one at that. What kid? It's the only job I got and I gotta do it right. Maybe it's crazy, but... That's the way I work. If I had maybe a thousand dollars... No, it... Shiv. No. You come a lot closer to making me forget the job than a cheap hood with a roll of dough. But I wouldn't do different if you were my own kid brother. You, you, you gotta go in. Can't you understand that? Cop, that's all. Once a cop, always a low down heel. And that gang. Next time the Panthers pull a job, maybe somebody will shoot straighter. There'll be a first degree charge, and by that time, maybe you'll be old enough so you can end up in a regular court. What the devil kind of life is that? Can't you understand? Understand. I understand, all right. I thought there was one decent cop, a guy who'd stick by a friend, but... I was a sucker, see? I was wrong. I hope that flatfoot that got shot dies. I hope he dies, and I wish it was you. I went down a couple of days later to see the kid at the children's shelter. He was out playing basketball with a slew of kids in for everything from truancy to armed robbery. I got in to see the social worker, and she talked to me a long time about Shiv. Only she called him Burton. Then they brought the kid into the office and left me alone with him. He just stood there a long time without saying anything. And finally he got curious. Well, what do you want? I just come to see how you were. I'm fine, just dandy, so you can go. They caught Shorty and the rest of the Panthers. Most of them are in the Center Street jail. So? Look, kid, do you need anything? I mean, a toothbrush or something? Nah, thanks. They treat you all right? Yeah, I guess so. A lot of questions. Look, the social worker told me you'd be up before Judge Carroll. Now, that's the lady judge. I'll have to be there, too, see? So between us... Maybe it'll be all right. Don't do me no favors. Oh, what do you want to be so tough for? Sometimes you get me so mad I could... Be sure you don't need anything. I'll make out. Okay, then. Goodbye. Shake. No? Okay. So long. Er... Yeah? Look. A kid in the yard. He told me... I mean, where are they going to send me? Are they going to keep me there all the time? Oh, no, not too long, I guess. This kid said they throw away the key, see? He told me they beat the ears off you all the time. Would they do that, huh? The kid, he'd been up before. He, he told me... He told me that... I, I don't want to stay there all the time, Irv. Er, er. Oh, hey, take it easy. It ain't that bad. I, I've seen it up there. I wouldn't tell nobody else. I'm scared, Irv. What are they going to do to me? You'll be okay, Shiv. You'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I guess I can take it. I gotta go, kid. 
Yeah. Irv. Yeah. You can... I mean, if you want, you can write me a letter. Oh, sure, sure, Shiv. We'll make a lot of plans for later. I mean, for after. Yeah, I know. Only don't give the police station for a return address. No? I wouldn't want the other guys to know I was getting letters from a cop. That's how it is. Shiv is upstate at the state school. He writes to me about once a month. Grubby, tough letters. And I send him stuff. The other day, Sergeant Gold called me over to the desk at the station. Hey, Irv. Yeah? I got a check here for you. A check? It's a reward from the insurance company. For catching the warehouse thief. Oh. hundred bucks. A hundred bucks. Don't you want it? You know what I feel like, Sarge? Judas. That's what. Judas. You gonna cash it? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll keep it. I'll keep it for shift. A hundred bucks is a hundred bucks. Even if it is blood money. You have just heard Betrayal, as written by Ernest Kenoy and directed by Harry W. Junkin. The part of Irv was played by Bernard Grant. Shiv was Edwin Bruce, age 12. Other players included Arthur Q. Bryan and Alan Stevenson. The music was composed and conducted by Dr. Roy Shield. Radio City Playhouse is supervised for the National Broadcasting Company by Richard P. McDonough. Next week, the story of Michael and Margaret, the story of their dreams and their love, entitled King of the Moon by Joseph Shul. We warmly invite you to join us next Monday for Attraction 10, King of the Moon, on Radio City Playhouse. Robert Warren speaking. This is NBC, 